Jack's Corner, episode 18. Okay, after that last episode where I heavily embarrassed myself, I am here to do another discussion type thing, and joining me solo is Catbit. We've had a few aborted attempts to do one with just you, but um, I'm very proud that we have the host of the podcast that hosts um, this stupid web show. Um, Catbit, please introduce yourselves to the peanut gallery. <laughs> I thought my name was Jorge. At least that's what you keep calling me. Well, that's what I call you whenever I feel like it. Um. God. So, what are we going to be talking about today on Jack's Corner, Jacob? Well, this was your idea, so if people get mad at me for doing this, I can just blame you. We're going to be talking about a video someone made about skin theory in Spongebob, and I was not <laughs> expecting to be invested in that video because at a certain point, I was. I feel like... For me, because like this was the okay. So um, funny story. One night I was bored out of my mind, just playing like um Mario the Mario All Stars collection on my Switch, and um because I wanted to block out the noise of my brothers at the time because they were screaming and throwing hissy fits on the internet. Um, I stumbled upon this video after I was listening to like um Grandma's Kisses, and like because I didn't felt like changing the video, I just listened to it a whole minute, and my God, this makes the fucking Mario is insane theory look like a normal theory by comparison. I genuinely think this video was a shit post. Like, the whole time I was listening to it, like, I was just telling myself, please, d please say psych. Th this has to be a joke, right? Like, it's a pretty convincing shit post. Like, when I was going into it, I was pretty skeptical that this was going to be low effort, but he, he really sells it. That guy wrote and narrated this shit. He really sells this cockamamie crap to me. <laughs> so I think I want to start asking you, like, um, what are the points you brought up when you were, like, um, writing the script for this? Well, I don't so write a script. A I just... just wrote, like, the basic um, bulletin points he made. Alright, let's do this. So, there were like six things. I guess there were like six topics he had. The basics, the salmon suit instances, the sub-theories, the mastermind, and the greatest show. Oh my god. <laughs> So, let's start with the first one. Okay, so the basics includes a concise definition of skin theory, which is as follows. The metatextual analysis of SpongeBob SquarePants, which recognizes and explores the significance of glaring thematic references to sea creatures who knowingly wear, remove, and exchange various forms of costumes, disguises, and skins in Bikini Bottom. I'd say, like, for me at least, because I know that, like, I kept saying this to myself multiple times, it's like, with a show like Spongebob, like, logic is obviously thrown out the window, like, they don't, you can tell, like, with the staff at the time, like, I'm Steven Hillenberg and whatnot, they didn't give a flying crap, they didn't give a flying fuck about logic, because, like, if, if, it, if it interfered with, like, the jokes or, like, the plot, then it would probably just be, it'd probably be a boring show. But it's, like, again, like, Spongebob is such an outlandish cartoon, and it's, like, it's such a weird premise that, like, this guy is basically, like, starting this whole theory off because of, like, a couple of jokes that were present in, like, the earlier seasons. Oh, that whole, like, um, um oh, yes, yeah, that whole suspension of disbelief thing, oh, that comes up later. The suspension of, di so that's later on in the discussion, I'm supposed, I'm guessing? That comes like later on when he's talking about the sub theories oh boy so again it's like my biggest answer to this whole ordeal is just like it's a fucking cartoon get over it no i think it's pretty interesting because like well, okay I'll, I'll talk about it later but the first pr there are like four principles to skin theory the first is skin theory is based on the analogical nature of human society compared to what can be observed in Bikini Bottom. Basically, it's saying, like, how it, Bikini Bottom is similar to our own society. I mean, again, because I don't feel like I want to keep repeating myself as a broken record, I already said this before, but again, it's like, Spongebob is supposed to be a surrealist cartoon, and it's like, yeah, these fish people, you know, like, you can never see, like, fish like this in real life, but at the same time, it's like, obviously, like, 
you have to put your suspicion of disbelief out the window because like again with spongebob like this is the same cartoon that has given us jokes like um sick by leaving the refrigerator open or he becomes or, like he where he adopts his the jellyfish kept hopping it to like other people's dreams that was from season one there was the time like um he he patrick and squidward got lost in the middle of the woods because like um their treehouse was just like slingshot across the the entirety of bikini bottom i had an a accident that's a great example especially with like the, but especially the ending oh that ending is pretty important to skin theory but i think this point what this principle is trying to like get to is how can skin theory be applied to the real world which is pretty outlandish because i can't really think of times where i would where like my skin would like come apart unless it was like in a nuclear disaster or if your skin was like made out of paper per se like um you had like a real bad sunburn and your skin peels i'm just like saying i'm just standing here right now just saying to myself it's like it's fucking spongebob why are you i don't know like i chose this topic I think, like, it's important that we start discussing why this guy is a complete fucking moron, in my opinion. The second principle, skin theory is not hidden from the characters in Spongebob. It is hidden from the viewers, which means that we are completely unaware of this. In fact, I was unaware of this before I saw the stupid video. I mean, I mean, again, it's like, with this show, it's... <laughs> There are multiple times where, like, um, they would just do, like, these outlandish jokes just for, because, like, again, it's wacky and out of place that, like, you can't help but, like, burst out in the laughter because of, like, how nonsensical it is. And, like, um, with the jokes involving, like, a character wearing different skin or, like, um, the guy, like, the head, like, the head repairman clinic or, like, like, the head clinic, it's, like, you don't think twice about it because, like, it's just a quick joke that's, like, it's snappy and it's there, it's, like, what's there th what's there to think hard about it just you know what this kind of reminds me of kind of reminds me like whenever like this whenever you see like the toonies make like these stupid crackpot theories about like oh is steven universe sans from undertale or what or whatever that wherever the hell that crap is i like that theory it's a shit post <laughs> yeah no but there are actual toonies out there genuinely believe that genuinely believe that theory the third principle Skin theory is propagated by extra textual forces. Extra terrestrial forces? No, extra textual. What it means is the writers intentionally left clues and other hints as to the to let people aware of the existence of skin theory like this was all intentional. So so accor so according to this dumbass it was intentional to like make people overthink a dumb joke from spongebob like oh like the fucking like the head enhancement clinic or Sp or squidward wearing a salmon suit like i mean when i saw those jokes i didn't think i just thought they were funny and just didn't think twice about it it's like this guy it's like what's what's even the point of you like making these ridiculous assumptions well, like, Captain, you're, you're pretty cynical about this but maybe i'm not th throughout this video i will convince you that this is real <laughs> and that we were all living in ignorance this entire time <laughs> Sure, prove me why I'm a, prove me why I was wrong this whole time, Jacob. I, I, I need to, I need to listen. I'm genuinely interested in hearing your thoughts by the end of this. And then the final principle: skin theory is a multifaceted work in progress. Multifaceted work. In, it, it's fucking. I, I keep saying this multiple times. It's fucking SpongeBob. You're not supposed to take this stuff seriously. So he gives off a, a, viver, a various a huge number of instances later on but the one he highlights or spends the most time on is the salmon suit from dying for pie you remember like spongebob says oh, he's yeah, going to show like, squidward to everyone in town wearing a salmon suit for no reason yeah and like again like you don't think twice about it because like it's such an out of no because it's such an out of nowhere like suggestion from sponge it's like you can't like seeing squidward wearing the salmon suit it's just funny it's like because you don't like you don't expect that or it's like it's so nonsensical that you like it can't you can't help but find it funny i would wonder if that part where spongebob's performing open heart surgery on squidward applies to skin theory i mean uh, this is the same show where like squidward has 
has fallen off a cliff and exploded, and he somehow survived. Or like um the fucking episode, like the dying for pie episode, where like um SpongeBob accidentally trips on a rock and like a nuclear explosion destroys the entirety of Bikini Bottom. Well, with the salmon suit, he brings up two points. And I will read off these two points right now. First, it's really weird to compare it to human society because if a person were to wear, like, the flesh of another person as, like, a suit or a disguise, that would be very unsettling. Similar to how an octopus can wear the costume of a fish over his body. Two, real-life salmon are actually gray or silver. It's their flesh or their meat stuffs that are pink. So basically, he's wearing a dead salmon. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how would you be? I mean, how would that apply? I mean, it's like, like the other fish in Bikini Bottom. Like they're supposed to be based off of like real life fish, and like they don't have the same color as um their sea life counterpart. I mean, it's like. Has an oct- like have you ever seen an octopus the same color as Squidward or um because like if that if that does exist please prove please show me so you could prove how much of a goddamn moron I am because or, like or I have another point salmon are freshwater what the fuck is one doing one in the ocean exactly it's like it's like it's supposed it's just a dumb gag <laughs> it's like so SpongeBob just happens to get a salmon suit it's like. How can there be like how can there be like salmon in the middle of the ocean? If they're freshwater fish. I mean I guess if it was a bass costume, then maybe I can see it, but again, it's like they're like again, it's like even like the bass characters in SpongeBob, assuming there was like bass background characters, they weren't colored brown or green. I mean it's like and I guess I'm applying this from the modern season, so god this is gonna hurt me, but it's like there was like the fucking the redneck family, which is supposed to be like stand in for angler fish. They don't look like, have you ever seen an angler fish with that with that color scheme before, Jacob? Well, I mean, it's supposed to all be like abstract colors. I mean, real life sponges aren't shaped like kitchen sponges, and octopus don't have like six tentacles. Again, it's like this isn't done because like, oh, they wanted this cartoon to be weird and abstract. It's just, I'm sorry, it would like close to real. I, I, I this gotten like this video has broke my mind when I saw this, but it's like. It's a cartoon, and it's like, the characters have, like, these weird abstract looks and colors because, of, like, that's what you're supposed to do with a cartoon. It's like, what kind of fish have you seen in the ocean that's, like, purple or it's, like, um, or, or, oh, God. You know what I mean, right? Like, have you ever seen realistic fish in SpongeBob before? There was an entire episode about them being transformed into realistic versions of themselves from, like, either season 9 or season 10. And again, I feel like with Spongebob, it's like, with this kind of cartoon, I mean, it's like, you're not supposed to take it seriously, in my opinion. And it's like, I mean, again, like, I kind of expect this kind of stuff from, like, I don't know, Mr. Renner, because, like, that guy has no life whatsoever, but it's like, this sounds like a crackpot theory, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, comparing this guy to Enner is kind of a huge insult on the guy who made this because this was actually pretty funny yeah you're right um to the guy who edited that video i'm deeply sorry we're not i don't want to compare you it wasn't my intention to compare you and um, part of me just wants to say that this is just an elaborate shit post but the other half like the guy who just like made this was genuine when he when he was talking about that all this everyone else just fell for the joke actually one thing while i'm on it I was actually surprised to find that this video was released a year ago. It didn't come out like a few weeks ago. I don't know, man. Why were you shot? I don't know. I, I guess. I don't know. It's like the, the fact that like this guy made like this hour-long video must kind of like hint at the fact that he probably was just bored out of his mind one day and just wanted to like um make something up just to get the attention of people on the internet. Now he goes on to the other various instances of skin theory in seasons 1 through 4 only, which according to him are the best seasons. And I'll give him credit for including 4 in with 1 to 3 because some people think like 4 is just business as usual for the show, despite the fact that Hillenburg had stepped down by that point. I would get into like I would get into like my opinion of how I feel about this season, but like we're not talking about that, but more so just like talking about like this stupid crack this stupid skin theory video. What was your favorite example that he went over? One of my favorites was when he was talking about I had an accident and the 
coincidences regarding its voice actors. I say like the funniest one for me was like he just chose like an like a random joke from um like this one off joke from like um the episode where Mrs. Puff gets her ass sent to jail with it's like um SpongeBob turn it like um have like rock costumes or like um they disguise themselves as police officers. Okay. Like that was kind of that was kind of a fun that was kind of like a funny point to me in my opinion okay. when I saw the So video. the coincidence thing has to do with the gorilla and the horse, which okay, so they're obviously like people in costumes. So wouldn't that also count as like skin theory? Even though they're just humans and not like anthropomorphic fish creatures. I mean, God, I keep like I feel like I'm just repeating this at this point. It's a, it's a it's a cartoon, man. What a cat! It's if like keeps saying it's a cartoon, then it's no fun. Yeah, you're right. You I'm gotta saying. like think, like you gotta like apply your logic to that show. You gotta apply like the show's logic to like your thinking. Then it like becomes. A million times funnier. I say, I'm saying, like for me, to, when you brought that up, it's like, it's like, it's goofy at the same time that SpongeBob wouldn't know what a gorilla is, but like on the other hand, it's like I'm guessing maybe they have like their own variant of like sea gorillas in like um the middle of the ocean or like i'm guessing they probably like or i don't know it just feels like it was just a dumb joke that they just wanted to tell just for the hell of it okay so the gorilla was voiced by frank welker who voiced fred on scooby-doo in pretty much every incarnation and what does fred do he removes masks yes he removes the masks off the monsters revealing them to be ordinary human criminals and the horse was voiced by d bradley baker and who did he voice uh perry the platypus well yes him but also klaus on american dad <laughs> who is a fish but he's also he was also formerly a human but his brain was implanted into a goldfish by the cia that is the most specific choice of characters to like make this weird comparison to the strange part is american dad wouldn't begin airing until a year and a half after i had an accident premiered <clears throat> was it two years i don't remember I remember I had an accident when it was apparently aired in like 2002 or something. Uh, they were probably all produced then, uh, but that's n neither here nor there. <laughs> I just loved how specific and how that co and how that coincidence was just so like I don't know. It, it was like orgasmic learning about that, but not really because um. Well, I don't do that kind of stuff in my pants. <laughs> this coming from the guy who, who openly admitted how much of a cuck he is towards Princess Bubblegum and Marceline last week. Okay, please, please don't bring that up again. But <laughs> what, what else was fun? Oh, the part with the doctor fish and him having brown arms, even though the rest of his body and head are purple. You know what that, you know what like that reminded me of when TMZ was like randomly harassing Matt Groening regarding like Smithers being black that one time. Yeah, but this is like even weirder. Like, is he wearing gloves or why are his arms just like a different color? I feel like he's, I'm, I'm guessing like he's probably just like wearing gloves in that episode. Like probably like really tight gloves and, or something. No, no, they can't be, like, tight. They, they just have to be, like, the color of shit. I mean, on one hand, it's probably getting- guessing, like, it's probably, like, a different version of, like, the same Dr. Fish, where, like, um, he probably just has, like, different arms or something, but it's, like, I don't know, it's just- it's such a weirdly specific thing for, like, this guy to bring up that, uh, just to prove his point with this theory. Apparently, according to skin, skin theory, can also apply, like, rearranging body parts, like, when Patrick, um, Move that dot on his chest to his nose, and also when Squidward used that reef blower to like um rearrange those other two squids' um eyes and nose. I mean, this is the same cartoon where like um SpongeBob was shown being dis like mangled apart, or like what are some other examples like um or Mr. Krabs in that one episode where um going on strike where like he got so enraged parts of his body were just like falling off just like falling apart or or again when like i brought up with like um the fucking episode where squidward become has like a krabby patty fetish like he expands like in a to like an exaggerated size and like explodes and like the only thing that survives is like his head and it's like it's probably just like normal it's probably just like a normal occurrence in bikini bottom for like um characters to like have their body parts just like dismantled like that 
which 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 takes us back to the second principle it is so normalized amongst the bikini bottomites that they don't even second guess what well, i mean this is the same show where they basically spongebob and patrick created life using a pencil per se oh, boy. like they played they played God for one episode, and like um, they used a pencil doing that. But I think the most infamous example of skin theory, besides the salmon suit, is the head enhancement clinic fish, who apparently, <laughs> who says he only got his head enhanced, but apparently his whole body is different. Unless like he was just born with a small blue head, while the rest of his body was green. I'm guessing like his, I'm guessing he was born with a birth defect, which probably explains why he got that went to the head enhancement clinic that one episode. He needed his head to like fit his body, then he would become whole. He will finally be seen as normal. He can achieve nirvana. But no, SpongeBob had to up and ruin his life. So there were some other examples that I can think of off the top of my head that weren't covered. One would be like when Patrick gets a new nose and he goes to like a nose clinic. Yeah, that's like weird that he didn't bring that episode up to like prove his to like um help prove his point about the skin theory. Season but, six. But I'm guessing this is like one of those ordeals where like people who would rather pretend like those seasons never existed just to like um just so they could talk about the good seasons, which I don't mind, but then again, this is coming from somebody who was called a sponge boomer by a lot of toonies on multiple servers he used to be on, so an episode I previously talked about, Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy, shows Plankton weaponizing skin theory by controlling Sandy's fur like a mech suit. Yeah, that that that's also a good that's also like a good point for like skin theory. How come the guy didn't bring that up when he was talking about skin theory? I mean it's like better than Plankton using a robotic crabs as a disguise because like with skin theory i would imagine it's more organic than it is mechanical this i mean spongebob kind of fell for like for like the robot crabs but then again he isn't the brightest creature in the entire ocean so okay so those were the instances that um support his claim now we get to the sub theories first is the ritual aspect and to him, these characters like partake in skin theory mainly because of relig because of um, religious reasons. Oh boy! You know what this reminds me of when he said that? Like those, like you always see, like those stupid theories about like how SpongeBob and friends are supposed to be like the representation of the seven deadly sins. Yeah, but this all had to do with the Flying Dutchman, even though we already have a god this... who like yeah. exists in the universe or two. Well, I don't want yeah, to like, bring up the other one, but... Yeah, like, how come he didn't bring up King Neptune? Like, um, doesn't he count as, like, a god that, like, um, the entire Bikini Bottomites fear and, like, worship and fear? But he says the Flying Dutchman. Now, he gives off some points as to what a deity is. They are supernatural entities, specific, come from a... Sp um, wait, wait, no, wait, I'll say it again. This is what a deity is is according to this guy supernatural entities coming from a specific geographic location they, no wait no wait no this was Take about wearing masks for like the deities they would channel like supernatural entities in a specific geographic location on special days of worship strong spiritual power the ability to cause great harm from the deity i mean <sighs> god we're we're still gonna br like uh bringing up like the current seasons um the episode with like um Trident, like Trident. he, <laughs> like he caused a lot of havoc in Bikini Bottom that one time, didn't he? Yeah, I'm but, guessing like the yeah, but they weren't wearing any disguises or like modifying their skin. I feel like it's also mostly due with the fact that like um I'm guessing like the pe like the staff or I'm sorry not the staff um the Bikini Bottomites were probably just not bothering to celebrate like this god and deity like. The Flying Dutchman, according to this to this guy. Yeah, I mean, I guess because I like the Flying Dutchman is like a ghost, and I guess he's I mean, a deity, even though he's not. I mean, again, it's like if you know you if this guy knew if this guy like knew SpongeBob as well as like he says he does, it's like he probably would have like brought up the episode where like um SpongeBob and Patrick look at the um. Like a comic book that like Squidward had in his house when um when they were fooled by him being a ghost. No, yeah, that was early. It's not like they established the lore yet. I mean, I don't know. It's like 
it's 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 kind of like ridiculous in my opinion but it's like at the same time it's like it, it's spongebob you're not so it's a it's a it's a goofy cartoon and it's like the fact that this i don't know it's like this feels like such a lot of effort put into use into like an elaborate video like i don't like even consider this a shit post like i feel like this guy was genuine when he was making this well captain in the description we're probably gonna have to put like take a shot every time Capit says it's a cartoon <laughs> fuck you jacob <laughs> Hey, hey, I gotta get back at you somewhere. <laughs> okay, Jorge. Okay, this one is probably the one that needs the least explanation, but the mass psychosis element. What this entails is that everyone just went crazy at some point, and they engage in it because they think it's normal. I mean, became, I mean, like... I can see where this is coming from because, like, there are some times, like, bikini bo the Bikini Bottomites have went insane, like, um, that's a good example. On um, the fucking episode where Patrick, like, sings a song about himself and, like, everybody was just, like, losing their minds because of how awful it was, because of how bad the lyrics were. I mean, they were right to get mad. Would that song really cause us to go crazy in real life? I mean... If it was sung by the Black Eyed Peas, then yeah. I mean, has anybody ever gone insane listening to music? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure those people were institutionalized. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> you know what? Again, no, it's... no, all the people that go to Imagine Dragons concerts, I'm pretty sure they're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's a good example? Like, um... There's another one where, like, um, I guess, where, like, the Bikini Bottomites went insane, like, Spongebob and Patrick caused, like, mass hysteria regarding, like, a butterfly. Yeah, but they don't know what butterflies are. For all they know, they are just, like, these winged monsters of destruction that'll suck out their souls. I mean, the thing was trapped in a bubble, but, God, like, but I, keep, I keep forgetting that, like, everybody in, like, Bikini Bottom's, like, a complete goddamn moron in this show, so. Now, here's my favorite sub-theory, and this one has three points to it. This is the costumed human hypothesis. Now, do you want to guess what this is about? Fish, the fish people are human, are just humans in fish costumes. Yes. Now, I will read these three points to you, and you will cringe all at the same time. One, every character is a human being in costume. Two, their identities are made up acts. Three, all the plots are just performances being acted out. Which, with this, this is where suspension of disbelief comes in, because you can pretty much, like, wave away any inconsistencies to real life that might happen in the show. Just like, why is there fire underwater? Or, how can there be a beach? at the bottom of the ocean. Now this is just starting to sound like one of those shitty creepypasta fan theories. Yeah, it feels like at this point, he starts to like, drift away from the skin theory itself, and just is like, oh, yeah, yeah, suspension disc moves awesome, baby. <laughs> That's what I've been saying this whole time, honk honk, <laughs> nudge nudge. Yeah, wink wink, nudge nudge. <laughs> So I guess, it's like, what's the final point that this guy brings up, if I can ask? Actually, he just talks about the mastermind, who is Steven Hillenberg. And then he goes on, like, a brief history lesson about the show. And then his final point is how Spongebob is the greatest show, which is kind of debatable, but Spongebob did have a huge impact on our generation, so I guess it's the greatest in that regard. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for Spongebob, like... I have a lot of respect for that show. I have a lot of respect for the show because of it. I mean, at least this video does end off on like a heartwarming note and not like a cynical one. Like a lot of these videos would be want to do. Yeah, like um, Matt Pat's like again, like I kept, like I brought up earlier in the video, like um, Matt Pat's Mario's insane video theory, which you know. Just like hearing your points discussing this, I'm starting to, like this feels like it feels less like I feel less cynical towards this video and more so. Eh, it just feels like this guy's just having fun, just sort of hell of it. I mean, like I said, this is a funny shit post. Something that I really didn't want to do at first, just because I'm a lazy bastard. But I was able to like 
really get invested in it. Well, until like we got near the end and it just got like, eh, just kind of boring. But overall, I give this video a solid C. I give this video a seven out of ten because I have no standards. <laughs> So Jacob, what are you gonna do next week? Next time for Jack's Corner? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll like review Christmas special, and maybe I'll just choose like uh, an unfitting yeah. mute, and, and my choice of music will be very unfitting because I just don't <laughs> think thematically. <laughs> oh man, um, I, I had a lot of fun doing this. Not gonna lie. Yeah, this was this was a lot. This was. A, I'm sorry, you go first. There were times where it felt like I was stuttering, like, like you remember the part um, when when I was like trying to bring up like the deities. Yeah, I mean, I would say this though, like um, this video is like kind of inspired, like um, inspired me to like rewatch the whole show again, assuming like I can find it up like on Canadian Netflix or so. But again, I have a lot of nostalgic attachment to SpongeBob and um. This is probably this probably isn't like the worst thing related to the character, in my opinion. That would have to be Sponge on the Run, but I feel like that will be for next. That will be for the next time I ever appear on this show again. Oh, I don't think we're gonna do an episode on that train wreck. Oh boy, I I have like some really controversial opinions on that movie. But if you want to watch all SpongeBob, just get a VPN and make a CBS All Access account. Yeah, keeps. Yeah, I, yeah. Let's let's support Viacom because they need money. No, let's let's not support Viacom. <laughs> also, let's just pirate everything ever made, even the shows we like. <laughs> nice. So that's the moral of the video, Jacob. Like, I'm um, just piracy is good. And also, we need to like overanalyze cartoons because that's funny. I have a warped and sense also, of humor. And also, and also, um, what's his face? I need, I need to like end this on like a stupid joke. Um, walk over London, walk on Chicago. Time <laughs> takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. <laughs>